how we can create this render in Enscape and convert it to this render. So in this tutorial, we will talk about it. Let's get to work. Hello guys, what's up and welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Worker Studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how we can create some catalog and industrial rendering with Enscape for SketchUp. So before we start this tutorial, as you can see, simple environment without any type of special modeling. And I only use the Enscape perfect online asset for here. So I'm going to start my job with the uh, save frame. So I'm going to click on it. And this is my main view of my job. So the point is that the background of this render is a little bit too dark and too empty. So I'm going to turn off the save frame, click on the Enscape as a library and add one of the uh, vase or flowers in the accessories. So I'm going to change the category to the accessories and change my tags to something about, for example, flower. When I check out the flower, I can see some type of special items in here, but it's not really complete. So you can search your main idea in the asset library. For example, when I type vase in here, some type of high quality flowers will be appear for me. I prefer to use, for example, this one because it's a little bit too green and I really like it. So I'm going to click on the apply changes. And this is the uh, flower that we have in here. And another one for the background. So I'm going to pick it up, this one, and add it to my scene in here. Click on the uh, selection, select it, rotate it, very simple and easy, something like that. So I'm going to click on the apply changes. I think this one is better, so I don't need it. I will delete this one and click on the closing and apply and leave. So this is the final job that we have in here. So I'm going to click on the uh, view management in this place, click on the create view, and change my camera position to some place like that. My main target is the statue, glass, camera, and cup. So I'm gonna turn on the uh, save frame in here. Something like that is good. Don't worry about the distance between your camera and your objects. My Y or my eye height is some number about one meter. It's a little bit too high. I need some straight camera shot. So I will reduce it to some number about 0.86 or maybe 0 0.92. This one is much better. I can change it to the 94 to fix some crash problems. The Z is about negative 2.56, and I can change it to something about 32, like that. 40 is better. So X is about two, or I can change it to the 2.09, and the pitch is about zero because I need some straight camera shot. And the yaw is about 33. I can change the yaw to the 31 a little bit to the right side. So the time of the day and some position is really important in this render. So be careful about what you really want to have with this job. So I prefer to use some type of hard sunrise for my rendering. Something like that I need because I need a little bit artificial and artistic render. 160 degree for the azimuth and the altitude. It's some number about 2.8. So I'm going to click on the create and check it out another time. I can rename my camera, for example, art1, add to my favorite, and I'll link it. So I'm going to click on the save again. Art1 selected for me. So I'm going to click on the uh, view management in here, move it in this place. So now we have the visual setting. I'm going to reduce the field of view as I can. Something like that is really incredible and really useful, but how we can manage it. So it's about 30 degree and it's really good number for my job. But now I have some more problems with my camera. As you can see, it's a little bit too down and I can see some a little bit downside more the upside. So I'm going to click on the view management, edit bar and increase my eye height to the 0.98 to see what happened. Now it's much better. So I'm going to click on the save option in here and art one selected for me. So let's get to rendering. Open the visual setting, step one. Step two related to the exposure and some brightness. For the some brightness, you need atmosphere. So I'm going to click on the atmosphere in here. The fog intensity completely zero because I need some direct 
GI or global illumination calculation. So about the sun brightness, I can reduce the sun brightness a little bit to see what happened in my render. As you can see, yes, something like that is really useful for me. I can change it to something about maybe 16%. It's a normal lighting for my job. And shadow sharpness. Look at these statues shape on these books. So when I increase the shadow sharpness to the 100, as you can see, we have some hard shadow on the surfaces. Something like that is really good, but in some real projects, it's not really realistic. So hold it in some soft shadows about 31%. And it really helps you to manage your shadows much better. Artificial light brightness is not useful because we don't have any type of spotlight. So I think uh, now I need some ambient brightness. When I decrease the ambient brightness, as you can see, shadows a little bit get much darker. So ambient brightness helps you to manage your interior light with the sunlight. Some number about 68% can be really useful. So... I'm gonna continue my job in here. Night sky brightness is not useful. A sky option, all the cloud setting is zero. If you want some little bit cold temperature on your sun brightness, you can increase the density of the clouds, something about 32, for example. You see what happened? Clouds will be completely cover your sun. So hold it in some number, for example, 12. Or when I increase it, I can see some type of real time changes in my Enscape rendering. For example, something like that. But I prefer to use zero right now. I only want to show you how clouds can affect your interior rendering. Output is about PNG. The resolution is 960-1080. So, in the image bar, I will use the auto contrast. So, in the main bar, I will fo focus a little bit too much on my target. 27 is really good for my job. So... I'm going to turn on the depth of field. As you can see now, we have some artistic render. So uh, I'm going to play with the focal point. I want to focus on the uh, statue in here. So it takes a little bit time to see what happened. So I will reduce the uh, depth of field a little bit, a little bit. Play with the focal point. And this is the main result that I really want from this job. 0.72 is really good as you can see statue reflection is wonderful so i can increase the uh depth of field to some more number but you can see what happened in your job so be careful about it five percent is enough for me don't increase it or maybe seven is the maximum and i'm going to click on the image bar turn on the bloom option a little bit something like that for example 30 6 or maybe 28 something like that is really good lens flare can increase when i increase the lens flare you see what happened in your job i really like this 88 percent for artistic render is enough motion blur is zero Vignette is some number about maybe 16 and chromatic aberration is zero so in the saturation i want to desaturate this job a little bit not too much so i think 96 percent is good and I want some cold balance rendering for my job. So I can increase the uh, color temperature to some type of good number about maybe 11,000 Kelvina. Everything is good for me. And now time for the rendering. I'm going to render this job. I'm going to click on the uh, screenshot button and save it on my desktop. Press save. It takes a little bit of time. And after that, the render will be safe for you. Something like this. And now I want some create white render. So what is the white render? When I click on the visual setting, change the style to the white mode. As you can see, all the textures, assets will be completely convert to the white render in Enscape. So I really like these type of renderings because show the details much better. But if you want to show details better than the previous render, you can turn on the outline. So the secret of this render related to the outline. When I increase it to some number, for example, 16%, you can see the effects on these cup, glass, statue, camera, or books, or flowers. And I'm going to click on the uh, screenshot another time and press save. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time. And after that, this render will be generated for you. 
I can show you what is the differences between the white render in here and final render in left side in here. If this content is useful for you, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and goodbye.